I know why you're all watching this video. You really want to know how to make sandcastles. I think you all know the two ingredients of sandcastles, one of which is sand and the other is water. Now, how much water? Do you need a lot of water? If you have a lot of water, that is, you take the sandcastle and you submerge it in the ocean, of course the sandcastle is going to disintegrate, right? Too much water. But if you don't have enough water, the sand grains aren't going to stick to each other. And the reason you need only some, like a medium amount of water, you just want the sand to be moist. You want every particle to be moist is because you want to develop what's called a meniscus, a liquid bridge in between every grain of sand and the stickiness of the sand is actually a result of the water meniscus between the grains of sand not wanting to increase their size when you stretch it apart. So if you stretch out this men liquid meniscus, then you have more water-air interface and that's bad from the standpoint of surface energy. Now. Why is that bad? Well, let's take a look at this figure right here. And what we see here is a uh, happy molecule in the bulk. The bulk means, remember, away from the surface. And that molecule has all kinds of van der Waals forces with all of the other molecules in every other direction. So its potential energy is lowered by the fact that it is interacting with all these other molecules. Now it floats to the surface. And at the surface, you're missing about half of those interactions because now you're in contact with air and not the other molecules in the bulk. So as a result, we have a restoring force. So if you stretch a liquid surface out, those molecules at the top can de at the surface can decrease their potential energy by sinking back into the bulk and that has the effect of shrinking the surface. And that force that serves to shrink the surface is called the surface tension. And on in this figure, we're showing a wire frame that has a liquid film and a movable rod at the bottom. Now, the now gravity is pulling down on this liquid rod and the liquid film is pulling back up. And the rod is will be at a um, at an equilibrium position if the downward force due to gravity, like mg, is matched by the upward force due to surface tension. That's how to think about surface tension. So what is the surface tension? The surface tension, in this case, uh, is two times gamma lg. So gamma lg is the surface tension between the liquid and the gas times L. L is the length of the movable rod. Where did that factor of two come from? Well, it's just the way we set this up. There's a surface in the front of the screen and a surface in the behind the screen. So there are two surfaces and that's where the two comes from. The units of surface tension are force per unit length, where length is the length of the movable, of the movable rod. The surface tension itself is related to the surface energy uh, and specifically the, um, the, it is one half of the surface uh, uh, energy. So for liquids, the surface energy and the surface tension have the same numerical value, but different units. They're kind of equivalent units. So in energy, you have joules per uh, square meter, but for uh, surface tension, you have newtons per meter. You can show that those equivalents or that those units are equivalent, but really conceptually, they mean something a bit different. Okay, now where does the surface energy come from? Imagine if you pull apart a hypothetical column of liquid. It's a cylindrical column. Say you can just pluck it apart. As I go again, one more time for emphasis and you plug it apart into an exactly planar surface. That planar surface is going to have two times 
the uh, the surface energy of each one of those uh, of each one of those surfaces. In other words, it is one half of the work of cohesion of that sol of that uh, of that continuum phase of matter liquid in this case. So you pull that apart. You've got this work of cohesion. You 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 undo the work of adhesion you pull apart against the work of adhesion and then what you're left with is two surfaces in contact now with the gas phase or the vacuum phase and now the energies on either side of that column are the surface energy so that is one half of the work of adhesion what is that negative sign doing out there in the definition of the surface energy? Well, it is minus one half the work of adhesion, which is negative. So both of those negatives together will be positive. The surface energies are always positive because they are unfavorable compared to the reference state. The reference state in this case being stuck together. All right, so the next concept is the Laplace pressure. The Laplace pressure is the pressure exerted by surface tension, uh, or is the, is the extra pressure inside a bubble or droplet or, uh, or meniscus that is in excess of atmospheric pressure that is due to surface tension. So a, a droplet, that is, it could be oil or water inside water or oil to get a droplet, or it could be a bubble. This could be a bubble of gas inside a liquid, or it could be a soap bubble like you blew from a wand when you were a kid. Or it could be a meniscus. A meniscus is a liquid bridge that's almost like an inverse bubble. Um, so in this case, the concave surface of the meniscus points out. Now the Laplace pressure always acts to advance this surface or compress the surface in the case of a bubble or droplet or expand the surface in the case of a meniscus in the direction of the concave interface between the two phases and that's how you can think about the motion or the mechanical uh, the mechanical uh, potential that is created by the Laplace pressure Final, or not finally, <laughs> we have a little bit more to go. Uh, we have the issue of wetting. So when you have rain -X on your uh, on your car windshield, you can have scenarios of complete wetting, which is if you have a completely clean glass surface, you have a lot of SiOH groups that are very polar. Those interact by dipole-dipole forces with water, and the water spreads out. In the case of a of a uh, of a wetting sample, maybe you have a little bit of some grease on that windshield and it doesn't spread out so much. Maybe maybe the angle uh, at the edges, um, the edges right here are about, are about 90 degrees. And then you have a very hydrophobic surface, say you've rain -X'd your windshield, or maybe it's your, uh, your phone surface, which has a hydrophobic coating on it, and that forms a nice round uh, blob that, uh, that is, has a contact angle um, that is uh, bigger than 90 degrees, and that is a non-wetting surface. So this is a diagram of the triple interface. So anytime you have a droplet, it is a function of the equilibrium between all of the different surface forces, all the different interfacial tensions. You have the liquid gas uh, interface that forms a projection on the surface uh, and the solid liquid uh, interfacial tension. And those two, those two tensions serve to contract the bubble and make it less wetting, whereas the tension between the uh, whereas the tension between the gas and the uh, and the solid tend to want to uh, to draw the liquid on top of the solid, such as to cover it. 
Another phenomenon due to surface tension is capillarity. So the reason that paper towel is absorbent and the reason why if you have a really small straw and you dip it into a liquid reservoir that liquid rises up is due to a competition between the uh, is a competition between the gravity pulling the liquid down and the surface the favorable uh, surface energy of the liquid interacting with the stationary phase that is either the insides of the glass capillary tube or the interior of the paper towel so the cellulose fibers for example and they serve to draw the water um, up uh, because i didn't mention it i didn't show you before this is tells us about you know, grains of sand. So you have two grains of sand together. They're separated by some distance D and that liquid meniscus actually behaves kind of like a spring that, uh, that wants to suck these uh, surfaces back together. Because if you stretch that water uh, meniscus out, you're creating more water air interface, which is unfavorable energetically. That is all I have uh, right now, I'll see you in the next video.